What's going on, everyone? So it's official. The Los Angeles Lakers have officially signed Spencer Dinwiddie to a vet minimum contract after being bought out and waived by the Toronto Raptors. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie getting traded was not a surprise. Him getting bought out was. Uh, there were like little murmurs that if the Brooklyn Nets couldn't trade him, that they may have bought him out. Spencer Dinwiddie said on Twitter or X that that wasn't going to happen. And he was right. It wasn't the Brooklyn Nets that bought him out. It was the Toronto Raptors that ended up buying him out. And then there was all the the talk and concerns that he was going to go to the Dallas Mavericks uh, because he was sitting uh, behind the Dallas Mavericks bench, met with some of the players and stuff. And one of the things that I said was, if he flew to Dallas, then yeah, I'd be like, he's going to Dallas. But him already in New York, right? Because he never had to go to Toronto. He was traded from Brooklyn to Toronto, and Toronto immediately waived him. So he never actually had to leave Brooklyn. So for him to just drive down the street and go to a Knicks game, to me it just it was like, okay, like, yeah, he's interested in the in in the Mavericks, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he went out of his way to potentially go sign with them. Him yesterday being courtside with Rob Palinka hanging out him and his agent being there, and then meeting with the players and having those conversations, and then D'Angelo Russell saying basically that he's signing <laughs> in his post-game interview, and LeBron and everybody basically talking like it's a done deal, that was like, okay, he's going to be a Laker. And sure enough, Lakers were able to sign him. And this is huge, because this is a guy that the Lakers had on the radar for years now. Um, Lakers were actively trying to trade for him at one point. And he's a guy that before D'Lo's emergence, many people were screaming to go get him as an upgrade over D'Lo because of his legit two-way ability. Now, this season with the Brooklyn Nets, he has been rough, to put it lightly. Um, and a lot of it was he just was done with Brooklyn. He wanted out. He wasn't happy. Uh, he was a guy that basically just quit on Brooklyn, which... I talked about I didn't want them to trade for him because it's like if you're quitting on your team and you're just showing up to to get a paycheck, like what is it going to take for you to do that with the Lakers? But on a vet minimum contract for a guy that this time last year was averaging almost 18 points and six, uh, six assists in a starting role alongside Luka and the Dallas Mavericks and was playing excellent – and shooting 40% from three, and we can get him for a vet minimum, that is so low risk, high reward. You make that happen. He is more athletic than both of Austin Reeves and DeAndre Russell. He's a guy that can make plays for himself, make plays for others, play on ball, play off ball. Um, and if we can get some version of Dallas's Spencer Dinwiddie, then he's going to make a real impact on this team. Now, I'm not saying that like, oh, Lakers just signed Spencer Dinwiddie, lock it in, champions. No, I'm not saying anything like that. But this is a real significant improvement. This is a guy that fits some of the needs that the Lakers have. I understand defensively this year, he hasn't been great. He's like a 120 defensive rating, but he's had years where he was like a 112, 115. If he can get back to that, league average this year is 116 and a half. If he can get back to even 115, right, that's going to be massive. That is going to be huge for the Lakers. So if he can be that actual defensive guy and he can shoot 40% from three or even 38% from three, right? Like let's say he doesn't have a great three-point shooting season, but he just shoots like 37, 38%. Like that would be fine. He had two years in Dallas in which he shot 40%. If he can just be 37, 38%, that would be huge. Even his point total, right? With Brooklyn... He's averaging 12.6 points, so let's call it 13 points, six assists, one steal, half a block, three and a half rebounds. If he can average that, but play and lock down defensively, on top of playing and lock down defensively, um, give us, say, again, 38% from three and 50% from two-point range, which he's more than capable of doing, he's done that, and averages 13, 14 points, that's perfect. Because he would be our like fifth guy at that point. Maybe even 
further down the pecking order, right? Like, he doesn't have to be some superstar or anything like that. He's exactly what we need. And my hope is that the Lakers tell him, like, hey, we need you more on the defensive side of things, right? We know you can make plays. We know you can hit shots. We know you can score the basketball. Go and just lock down and be a legit defensive guy for us because that's what we need more than anything. And if he can focus on the defensive side and still contribute and give us, you know, say 13 and 6, that's perfect. Perfect. Right? So I'm not asking him to do too much. I'm not asking him to be a 20-point-a-game guy and on top of that be you know a legit two-way guy. No, I'm just asking, give us 13 and be a legit two-way guy. That's it. Uh, obviously, there's going to be games where he goes and he gives you 20. There's going to be games where he goes and maybe gives you 18 or whatever. Like That's great. Personally, this is just me personally, I would start him alongside D'Angelo Russell. They have chemistry. They play together in Brooklyn. Um, he is a legit 6'5", 6'6", point guard, shooting guard. And you can move Austin Reeves to the bench, which we know Austin Reeves is excellent off the bench. He's actually been more efficient and productive off the bench than he has in the starting unit. So, one, Austin Reeves, I don't think would gripe or be upset about it. For Austin Reeves, it's more about the playing time rather than whether you're starting or, or you know, finishing. And so, also, D'Lo's just been the better of the two so far this season. So I think you, you start D'Lo as your point guard. You have Spencer Dinwiddie play your two guard. So now you have his size and athleticism out on the perimeter. He could be kind of a point of attack guy, especially without Jared Vanderbilt and Cam Reddish and all that. And then... You know, you you can run times where you have Spencer Dinwiddie as your primary ball handler and he's running a unit. Or you have him and Austin Reeves out there. Or you have him and D'Lo out there. Or if you're playing even like a smaller team, right? Say you're playing the Warriors and they're running three or four guards. You now can match up that way. I mean, obviously there's the concern of, you know, Darvin Ham playing three guard unit lineups and stuff. But at least Spencer Dinwiddie is 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He can play small forward if he needs to. He can defend uh, some of the threes in this league. Uh, it's not something I want him doing heavily. <laughs> not something that I want him necessarily playing you know, mightily. But if, if you needed him in a spot, uh, to be honest, I'd rather Spencer Dinwiddie play the three than Torian Prince. <laughs> You know, like, if, if I had to choose between Tory and Prince and Spencer Dinwiddie starting, I would probably choose Spencer Dinwiddie. But hopefully that's not the case, right? Hopefully they keep sticking with Rui and all that stuff. But, again, personally, I... Look, Spencer Dinwiddie has played with D'Angelo Russell. He's played with Rui Hachimura. He's played with Tory and Prince, right? So that's three guys in the rotation that Spencer Dinwiddie has a relationship with has chemistry with, and can kind of, you know, pick up where they left off. Um, and I just, I like the idea of him slotting into that too. He's a legit starting level player. And that is massive. That is something that the Lakers really need and needed. Um, and for him to be able to come in and now provide and play that role, it's why I thought he was going to be a Laker, personally. Because it's just, again, it, you go to Dallas, where do you fit? They have Luka, they have Kyrie, right? Like, he's coming off the bench. And, you know, if he's coming off the bench, like, sure, but how many minutes? What does he play? How to, where with the Lakers, it's like, hey, we will probably start you. You'll have a real opportunity to start on this team. And we need your specific skill set more than anything, right? We need somebody like you. And then now you have... Just a one, a better two, a more reliable two guard than what you currently have. Um, you don't have to worry about that D Lo uh Reeves like backcourt at times. And you also now, when everybody's healthy, again, everybody being healthy, you have D Lo, Spencer Dinwiddie, Jared Vanderbilt, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis as your starting five. Spencer Dinwiddie now can defend the second best player on the other team where Jared Vanderbilt could pick that up. And then off your bench, you have Gabe Vincent, uh, Austin Reeves, as your main two guards off the bench, which I think would be great. Right now you have that balance. You have that point of attack guard and that you know scoring, playmaking guard. And then off the bench, you have that 
defensive 3 and D guard and that playmaking guard off the bench. And then you'd have Cam Reddish, Torian Prince, uh, and then on top of that, you add in uh, Christian Wood, Jackson Hayes. You know, maybe the Lakers go get a Robin Lopez. I think you're in good shape. I think you're in really good shape. And so, to me, this was this was a no-brainer on all fronts. It's a no-brainer for Spencer Dinwiddie. This is a no-brainer for the Lakers. Um, and you know, I would I would like the Lakers to maybe go get a, a Joe Harris still or a Brook Lopez even, or maybe even both. But the problem is you have to start waving guys, and it's like, who are you waving? Um, but, I mean, the only guys that they really have that they can wave is like Jackson Hayes, Christian Wood, and uh, Cam Reddish. I wouldn't want to get rid of Cam Reddish because we need his athleticism and defense, especially with Jared Vanderbilt out. Um, Christian Wood you could probably get away with. Jackson Hayes, I like his energy and what he's been producing. I like I like Christian Wood a lot. Also, problem is they just don't utilize Christian Wood properly. And so I just I just don't think he makes a lot of sense. Where if you get like a, a Joe Harris or a Seth Curry or preferably a Daniel House, that would be really nice. Because he's young, 3 and D guy. But nonetheless, look, Spencer Dinwiddie, like I mentioned, thrived alongside Luka. Imagine how he's going to play alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis. The, the looks he's going to get the attention that those two draw to where Spencer Dinwiddie doesn't have to worry about, you know, teams honing in on him. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, pretty much everywhere he's been, he's been like the second option or even third option in most cases, right? Think of all his stints in Brooklyn. He was like one of, if not the main guys. And then Dallas, he was like the second guy behind, he was like the Brunson replacement. Right, he was the second guy behind Luca uh, on most nights. He's gonna be like the fourth or fifth guy on the Lakers. He's gonna be slotted bare minimum behind LeBron James and Anthony Davis. So at worst, he's the third, or at best, he's the third guy. But he's probably gonna be behind D'Angelo Russell. So there's the fourth guy, and then Austin Reeves is the sixth man. When Austin Reeves is on the court, he's probably the the fourth guy. So you're basically taking a guy that is usually accustomed to being you know, one of the top two or three guys and moving him down to the pecking order and asking him just to play the role that he's best at, you don't think that he's going to have an impact? Absolutely. And again, he's a guy that we desperately need. We need that athletic guard that can defend, knock down shots, make plays for himself, make plays for others. I wouldn't be shocked if Spencer Dinwiddie comes to the Lakers and averages like 15, 5, and 5. Honestly. I wouldn't. I'm not saying he will, but I wouldn't be surprised. And do you know how badly the Lakers could use a 15, 5, and 5 guy right now? I, like, I mean, I wouldn't even surprise me if he was better than that. Just because, again, he's going to have he's gonna have the opportunities. And on top of him having the opportunities, he's just, he's, he's going to have the easiest time he's ever had in his career. Because he's going to have D'Lo, Austin Reeves, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis making it easy for him where he's going to be an afterthought in many ways when teams are usually trying to lock him down and keep him modest. Because, I mean, this is a guy that, I mean, it wasn't that long ago he just dropped 20 effortlessly against the Lakers. It's a guy that can put the ball in the hoop. Now, this is a guy that was making $20 million a year for a reason. He wasn't making $20 million a year because he's some bum. I mean, he started everywhere he's been. And played huge heavy minutes everywhere he's been. Even in the playoffs, this is a guy that is known to show up in the playoffs too. He's not afraid of the moment. You know, he's he's a guy that he's just a very valuable piece in my opinion. And I do think is a guy that can make a real impact. Again, I, I I'm sure I sound like I'm selling him as like you know Michael Jordan or something. I'm I'm not. I'm just this is a pump signing. Right? One, it's something <laughs> just because the Lakers didn't make any trades. But this is a guy that legitimately was on the Lakers' radar and many other radars. And would was, like, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, somebody that was looked at as an upgrade over D'Lo at one point. And this is a guy that in the postseason, in the playoffs, averages 14, uh, averages 14 and 6, basically. Um... His most recent stint in Brooklyn in 2022-2023, he played four games in the postseason, averaged 40 minutes, 
um, shot 39% from three-point range, shot 45% from two-point range, averaged 16.5 points, 6.5 assists, and 3.5 rebounds with 1.5 steals. Now, the previous year with Brooklyn, or uh, with Dallas, sorry, with Dallas, he averaged 14 points, uh, 4 assists, 3 rebounds, 1 steal, and half a block. And he, from 2-point range, shot 40, 42%, and from 3-point range, shot 42%. <laughs> so, it uh, looks like almost all of his shots were basically threes, for the most part. So, a guy that picks it up, can give you 15 a game in the postseason, defend some of the better players on the other team, depending on who it is, play multiple positions. What more could you ask for? But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question out to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What did you make of the signing? Did you love it? Did you not? Um, do you think this is huge for the Lakers? Do you think it's not? Do you think he'll have an impact? Do you think he won't? Again, however you feel, what your thoughts are, I would love to hear it, so let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one.